And we dance all night, people. You know? We dance all night. We dance all night. And just to underscore and emphasize what I'm trying to say to you, I'm gonna I'm gonna dance all night right now. <laughs> it's an Andy Kaufman bit! <laughs> I'm going to just keep dancing like this until you all leave. Amen. Praise me. <laughs> now, no, we dance. We dance for a reason. We we're trying to get next to. We're trying to, you know, trying to get a little parallel to. We're trying to, yeah, we, we want the earth to come up and come up into our, we want to, you know, the, want to get that, want to get that earth of Lydia. We want to get that holy chickly going on inside of ourselves. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Amen. Praise me. Amen. And then all of a sudden we understand. And all of a sudden, well, life may not be explained, but it's completely understood. We're parallel to it and we get it. Life winks at us. Well, life says, I'm not going to give you the secret. <laughs> but let's dance together. Amen? Amen. Like when you read a great story, and you just sort of sense the earth in the story. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And you know, the earth is not presenting itself in the story as E equals MC squared or something like that, but, but you just feel it. You just feel it. And then suddenly, Chile, suddenly Haiti, suddenly, suddenly the communication with the earth is just horrific. And then you can't understand that. We can't understand that. The earth has more talking to do to us, and it may be in the form of natural disasters. Now, the earth has been getting more media lately than the Olympics or Lady Gaga. <laughs> Come on in, people. Amen, praise be. You want to, you're welcome. Come on in. Hallelujah. Earth hallelujah. Let, let's, let's, we're, we're making, we're creating a church on the spot here called the Church of Life After Shopping. Amen. And what we do is we, we shout Earth hallelujah together. Let's demonstrate to these people what we've been learning so far tonight. Earth hallelujah. Earth hallelujah. Earth hallelujah. Earth hallelujah. Earth, hallelujah! Praise be! Amen! Hallelujah! Well, they're smiling anyway. Just today, in the newspapers, there was the latest scandal. New York Times put it back on page 15. New York Times is very, very slow on climate change. You know, they're just kind of, they have to have their middle, their middle class constituency move for them and then they kind of follow their perceived demographics. That's what they did with the Iraqi war. But now the permafrost has finally melted sufficiently that we're seeing methane plumes come out of the Arctic. It's a really difficult thing to, to accept. <laughs> Because this is this is this is a greenhouse gas that is going to make things much worse. It's been predicted. We knew it was going to happen, and here it is. It's coming sooner and in greater amounts than was predicted by by the scientists, and that that's that's been happening consistently. They're surprised by it. The, the the methane that is locked in the permafrost that is less than 50 meters below the surface of the ocean. It just bubbles to the surface like, like a fart. It just comes right up in its purest form. It doesn't dissolve into the seawater. And that's what's happening. That's today's scandal. It's, it's, it's the earth talking. And we don't know what we can do. We don't know what we can do in our, in our everyday life. And we once again have to deal, we have to deal with that, that feeling of helplessness. And there are lots of things happening at once. 
The fires, the droughts, the extinction spikes, the, the teenage suicides are just lots of things happening at once that we're dealing with. Violent chaos in our world right now. But every once in a while, climate change just makes us look up at the sky and just from some place in our psyche, we have to shout, Will I survive? Because this isn't an apocalypse to believe in. This is an apocalypse that's forcing itself on us. Or that we're forcing on ourselves. It's actually happening. Will I survive? And what about my child? What's going to happen here? What can we do? The earth has become a character in our lives in a completely new way. The earth wasn't like this to us, wasn't a character in the room with us, wasn't a character sitting on the roof talking to us, wasn't this, wasn't this presence like this just a few years ago. It's completely changed. The earth has become a kind of other. It used to be women and slaves, people of color. It, it, the, the other has now become the earth, life, everything. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an existential shift that we have to make that, 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 that we're all sort of kind of helping, trying to help each other trying to help each other out. How do we do it? Well, there's nobody telling us how to do it. You know, Al Gore can do his, his, his little Mr. Wizard, Dr. Wizard demonstration in his movie, but we don't really have, we don't really have a, a, a teacher to, to help us to deal with, with the isolation that each of us feels right now. It's extraordinary. It's, it's, it's new. <laughs> It's new. It's outflanking. It's it's out manipulating. It's it's completely it's completely more dramatic than the apocalypses that have been sold to us by the fundamentalist religions over the years. It's completely more more engrossing, more threatening. It's more personal. It's not a myth. Unsettled, unstable. What about my nation? Oh, there's something about this, 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 this Earth apocalypse that makes us look back at our nation in a completely different way. The United States is acting like an, a bully adolescent, and I believe. There are some people who have felt this way for a long, long time, but it's acute right now. And it's, for instance, Cohen, Kyoto, but, but Copenhagen. We snuck into Copenhagen, we were there a few hours, we made some power deals, and we got into our jets, and we got out! Amazing what happened there. Hillary and Barack were outrageous. They were like the American cavalry. They just like came in late and left early. That was how they dealt with that, that opportunity. And everybody from every culture was there. The earth was there. They, were, they had tailwinds. They were riding the earth from everywhere in the global south. They arrived. They were ready to talk. They were actually ready for a new kind of nation state, a new kind of world state, a new kind of conversation among people who want peace, who want to find a way to live on this earth together. And the corporations and the governments who have the money sneak in and sneak out. Well, you can get into your jet and fly back across the Atlantic, but you can't fly away from the earth. 